a lot of my channel is talking about fake gurus. Mm -hmm. And so I've talked a little bit about the music industry. And if I say the word fake around the music industry, is there anything that comes to mind? Fake people, fake business, fake relationships, uh, fake views, uh, fake hype, fake authenticity. These are all words that really... Fake women. <laughs> Fake influences, fake records. Now let's talk about fake influencers. So right now in the music business, there's a lot of artists that come out of nowhere on Instagram that all of a sudden have 500,000 followers. Right. Do you feel like some of these artists are getting promoted by record labels and that's kind of how they get big? I think that it's a combination of promo by record labels, but let's, let's go deeper. Some of these guys that come out and they're that large they have people on their team who know how to manipulate social media that's important that's why you're catching the 500,000 views the 600,000 views and if they don't know how to manipulate media they know what to do in order to enhance it so for example you gave me a blueprint tonight on what I should be doing to make myself better but now you've got people who work at certain record labels that know exactly what to do, how to implement it, and also at a record label, you have people who sit there all day and their job is just to do YouTube, or their job is just to make comments, or their job is just to reply to everything. It's a machine. So sometimes the fact that somebody gets 500 or 600 or 700,000 views is a combination of the money they put behind it, the manpower they put behind it, and the time that they get to do it. And then you might have great visuals in the case of Takashi 69 He's got great visuals. And you have somebody that's, you have a whole team. You can never just make it by yourself. You need a team. There's no way to make something happen by yourself, period. Now, what you just explained the machine. That's a word I've used about the the record labels, the major record labels. That's what it is. It's yeah. machine. So do you think do you think some artists are better served by actually signing major record deals? I think I think you're served by by signing a major record deal, but it's how you get that record deal. So I think everybody should sign a record deal, a major but, record deal. You have not in your career? Hold on, hold on. Right? I've signed a major record deal in my career, but here's the thing. It's how you sign that record deal. So, Russ signing a record deal is way different than Booty Lou signing a record deal. Because Russ has a certain amount of leverage that he brings to the table. Whereas Booty Lou walks in and gets signed by a record label, oh, we love you, you got 6,000 followers, you haven't, you haven't done anything. So, Russ has his own machine to push his own situation. Because he brings his own followers to the table, he now has more leverage. He doesn't have to accept the deal Booty Lou has to accept. At the same time, if you if you build yourself up and blow yourself up, you're coming with your own with your own fandom, your own your own everything. You don't need a record label. Now, here's the thing about a record label. A record label is a bank, okay? They're a bank of money, but more importantly, they're a bank of relationships and experience, okay? So, what makes what the machine, what makes the machine so attractive is, I don't know anybody at Jimmy Fallon other than Black, Black Thought. Now, let's just say that I wanted to get on Jimmy Fallon. I'd have to go and annoy Black Thought and annoy the hell out of him, who he put me on to a producer, and he'd do so and so and so, and that just goes on and maybe I get on Jimmy Fallon. Universal Records has a staff that all they do is deal with those people every day because they're pushing people through. And they say, hey, listen, we've got Drake coming through next month, but if you don't do Fat Man Scoop, then maybe we don't do the Drake thing here. That's the difference between being with a machine. Now, if you are able to blow yourself up like a Russ and make enough noise for yourself, the Jimmy Fallon show will come looking for you. Um, 
I think that everyone should sign a record contract, but maybe it's for one album. See, I think that you sign that record contract, right? And now you got seven albums. That could hold you for the rest of your life. But I think the goal is to do this. If you if, if, if you have a perfect situation, it would be this. Blow yourself up like Russ. Do one album on a major label. But now you have the leverage to say, if you don't make this album a hit, it's not commercially a, 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 a success, I can now walk away with my masters. It's all about leverage. Or it's, we can do this one album, and if it's commercially a hit and amazing, in X amount of years, you give me those masters back. Now, we can look at the state of the business. We lost as artists when it came to the digital space, right? We lost. But there are things that are happening now where I can blow myself up, where I have more leverage than I ever did. So, okay, cool. I lose money. I mean, I lose leverage and, and money and all of that. Where it was $7.99 for a single. Because I grew up, I grew up and I've cut my teeth in the days where a single was $7.99, $8.99, and the album was $17.99. Now, even up to $19. Shit, you can get an album for $20. Right? Now we're looking at a single for $0.99, cents, right? And we're looking at Apple getting what? Uh, is that 20% of 99 cents? Whatever the fuck it is. The numbers are relevant. Whatever. You know, Apple gets a piece of your shit of 99 cents. And now an album might be 6 dollars or something. It's just fucking ridiculous. But now the artists have more strength. So let's say that you get on a major label and you blow up. And you leave the, the major label when you're Taylor Swift. You can now go off on your own and have Taylor Swift records. And you, you might not sell four million, <clears throat> but you might sell two million. Two million by yourself is going to be way more profitable than four million dollars with Universal Records. That's a fact. Now, recently you've been doing a lot of interviews mm -hmm. with popular hip hop artists. You've been in this game a long time. Why do you think you still have the respect of all these legends? The reason I have the respect of all these legends is because I'm quiet, I'm respectful, I don't get caught up in gossip and bullshit, I don't care about your personal life, unless your personal life dribbles into the news where it's a talkable subject. I don't care who's... You put your finger in your butt. I don't care you, what you do in your life. I personally don't care, as long as you don't you don't hurt children and and people who can't take care of themselves, who are defenseless. Um, I don't stick my nose in where it needs to be, where it doesn't need to be. I go to the club. I do what I have to do, and I go home. My relationships that I have with other artists, I keep them short and succinct. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Hey, boom, boom, boom. And more importantly this, and I learned this lesson in 2020. Adding value. So, if Dr. Oz, if I interview Dr. Oz, right, I will come, I will go to Dr. Oz at some point and just send him a message like, listen, man, I appreciate you. Is there anything that I can do for you? Is there any way I could be ser of, of service to you? Maybe I can come to your next exercise session and just get on the mic for five minutes to hype people up. Giving people back value because here's the thing you can't take and not give. So I think that's the reason that I've had great relationships. Now, my popular series, Why Your Favorite Musicians Are Broke, I kind of broke down record contracts and everything. Do you feel like the industry, and let's stick to hip hop specifically, because you have a lot of history there. Sure I got Do you feel like a lot history? I got hip hop and EDM, but yeah, I noticed that the mo most of the broke people yeah, are in hip hop for sure. And are okay. So I was wanting a question. I'll leave it open ended, but basically, in your experience dealing with a lot of musicians and artists, do you feel like a lot of them, what you see on Instagram and social media, do you feel like a lot of that is maybe a little false? And uh, the money that they're promoting, it might be all in an image. Yeah, 100%. 
half of these <laughs> man, this is a game. 